Yer. The Eagles beat the Seahawks. Ha, huh, that's what we might have been saying if Carson Wentz was still in this game. Let's not kid ourselves. We don't know if the Eagles would have beat the Seahawks. It was a very grimy game. You know, there was a lot of uh, flags, a lot of misplays, missed calls, kind of rough, but it would have definitely been a different game had Carson Wentz played the entire four quarters. Unfortunately, he went out. The Seahawks uh, ended up playing better football offensively and defensively. And in the end, they came out with a 17 to nine win. Now this was definitely the um the most boring out of all the playoff games. I felt the need to say that because, well, like I said, much of the game was taken up by uh, missed calls, missed fires, missed cues. There was a lot more flags in here than I expected. I'm sure there's a stat out there somewhere. And they uh, there was a lot of like uh, empty calorie throws. Like the Seahawks got down into the end zone a couple times throughout the entire game but if you look at their uh, total yardage it would seem as though they got down there on almost every possession the same could be said for the Eagles although unfortunately they had uh, Josh McCown he only had 170 yards passing but they did a better game they did have a better game on the ground compared to the Seahawks Marshawn Lynch now this was one part that I found very funny during the game when the Seahawks were in the in the red zone and they passed the ball the first two times, I think. And the entire time, I was saying run it. Because they start off, I think, like on the four-yard line. They passed. They didn't go somewhere. They tried to pass again. And I think they got backed up to like the six or seven or something like that. And then they finally ran it. And it was with Marshawn. And you already know, Beast Mode activated for that one run in the entire game. He got them a touchdown. I think that was, at that point, it was 3-0. to zero, Then it became 10-0. to zero. The Eagles didn't score a single touchdown throughout the game whether it was on offense or defense and by the way their defense played their hearts out I said this when they played the Giants and now the Giants are nowhere near the caliber of team that the Seahawks are but you could see it the Seagulls team it was really injuries that destroyed their season and injuries that destroyed their postseason even with a bunch of nobodies in their secondary the commentators recognize it even a bunch of guys that just got off the bus and some of them are like playing some of their first snaps in the NFL the team played hard and props to Flusher Cox and Brandon Graham, who unfortunately got injured during the game. So they, they went out, uh, they lost their best edge rusher. They still had Fletcher Cox, who was their best pass rusher, period. And he was, he was eating up the middle there. He was uh, punishing the Seahawks offensive line. They, they were still producing great pressure and producing sacks so that the Eagles secondary could have some good, you know, covering. So have some good cover skills. Malcolm Jenkins... He didn't have his best game, but it's not as though he has he played bad either. He had like seven tackles, two assists. He even had a sack. Didn't really have any near interceptions, but played good coverage throughout. And if there's one player you look at this game, you have to talk about it has to be DK Metcalf. Rookie wide receiver who coming out the draft, everybody thought was going to be the best wide receiver in the entire class. He dropped to the second round. People were saying, oh, maybe teams didn't like something they saw in him. Maybe he's a bust after all. But nope, he got taken by the Seahawks in that second round, and he slowly but steadily improved throughout the entire season. And these last four or five weeks, he's had the best four or five weeks of his entire rookie season, and it's he's basically looks like a pro. I mean, this stat line right here: seven receptions for 160 yards and a touchdown. That's averaging nearly 23 yards a catch. That's not something you usually see out of a rookie, especially in a big time moment, big time playoff game. Russell Wilson seemed to have some type of great chemistry with him and after the game DK even said a lot of those throws they practiced together Tyler Lockett who's usually his main target he still had a good game 4 for 62 but he, he didn't target Tyler Lockett as much because he seemed to have some trust built upon DK Metcalf and maybe we'll see some more of that in later games but in general the way the offense performed today and the way the offensive line performed today for the Seahawks is a bit worrying going forward uh, next week let me see who they face real quick I believe it would be the um it's not the 49ers uh, let's see they'll be facing the Packers which is a nice rematch every time the Seahawks and the Packers meet up every time Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson meet up it's a good matchup but they're gonna have a tough time against the Smith brothers and the Packers pass rush and Packers defense in general because of that Seahawks offensive line and they need to get that rushing game going maybe this was something you know out of the blue this is not really the Seahawks stat line you see here for the rushing they barely 
covered like 60 yard rushing they need to change that if you're gonna try and win against the Packers but that's what I got for y'all today another quick short recap put your comments down below let me know what y'all think I'm out you're hi right, guys thanks for watching put your comments down below make sure you smash that like button subscribe and turn on post notifications until next time I'm out you're